Over the last few days, I saw there are quite a few discussions about the HDMI latency for the Panasonic Lumix S5 II, especially after some people watch Jared and Dunn's S5 II review. In Jared's review, there is a video clip that showed the S5 II has some pretty noticeable HDMI latency. So what is HDMI latency? It means if you connect an external monitor to your camera, Whatever happens in real world, there would be a bit of delay until you actually can see it on the external monitor. So the larger the latency, the bigger the delay. Jared has then posted an update on his YouTube channel saying the latency can be reduced if you disable the HDMI audio output option. Oh, by the way, you guys definitely should check out Jared's review. I have watched a lot of S5 II review over the last few days. His review is definitely one of the most informative one with a lot of testing that he has done. Now, this is actually a topic that I have been wanting to cover for a while because if you are a Panasonic Lumix camera user and you shoot with an external monitor, you will probably already notice this issue. When I was working on my S5 II review, I originally also did a bit of testing of the HDMI latency of the S5 II, but in the end, I didn't include that in my review because my results were very similar to the original S5, and my review was already about 100 minutes long. So I think my review was already way too long. So anyway, now I have finished my S5 II review and I have a little bit of spare time. So I thought I can come back and revisit this topic. So in this video, I'm going to show you my test results of the S5II's HDMI latency, how does the different camera setting would affect the latency and how you can minimize the latency as well. Now, before we start, one very important thing that I want to mention is, just like pretty much any electronic system, HDMI latency is just unavoidable. Every component in the video output pipeline would introduce a certain amount of HDMI latency. So when you see there is a delay in your external monitor output, it is caused by the latency of every component from the source to the final output. Your camera, your display, and if you have anything else like an HDMI switch or wireless transmitter, they would all add a bit of latency. So what I'm going to do is, I would connect the camera directly to my Dell desktop monitor using a direct wide HDMI cable. So the latency you will see would be the total latency caused by the camera and my desktop monitor. To find out how much latency is caused by the camera itself, I need to know the latency of my monitor. I tried to look up the specs, but it seems Dell hasn't published any figure to the public about this monitor, and I don't know of any way that I can measure the latency of the monitor myself. But if you do know of a way that I can find out the latency of a monitor, please do let me know as I can use it for other tests in the future. So now, since I cannot find out the absolute HDMI latency caused by the S5 II, but what about if I find one camera that has very low HDMI latency and then I compare with it? This way, I can at least get some relative figures. So I went to see my friends at Auckland Camera Center again and I borrowed a Sony a7 IV as that camera has really low HDMI output latency and I can use that as my reference or a base number and then I can do some comparisons. My test method is actually pretty simple. I just run a timer app on my phone and use the S5 II to record the screen of my phone and output it to the desktop monitor through a direct wide HDMI connection. All the tests were done while the camera is recording just in case recording does introduce additional latency. At the same time, I use another camera to capture a video of the phone screen and my desktop monitor at the same time. So when I review the video footage that I shot using that camera, then I can see the original timer on my phone screen and then the output timer on my desktop monitor. The difference between the time show on the two timer would be the total latency that is caused by the monitor and the camera together. One thing that makes it slightly tricky is because the screen on my phone and also my big monitor, the updates are not really synchronized. 
In other words, the two screens are not updated at exactly the same time. So if I pause the video and then look at the time difference between the two timer, that difference is not always the same. So for example, when the S52 is recording at full HD 120 frames per second, the latency that I measured using this method would vary between about 120 millisecond to 160 millisecond. So if I just do a single measurement, there would be too much error. The result is really inaccurate. So to minimize this error, I did 10 measurements for each recording and then I averaged the results. Now I said minimize the error because there is always some sampling error. So when you look at my results, just look at the results as the approximate numbers. I also ran into a little bit of unexpected problem. The Sony A7 IV suddenly overheated when I was still setting things up. I don't really know why the camera was only running for about 10 minutes or so when I was setting things up and it was not really a hot day. It may be around 25 degrees Celsius, which is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So I end up have to wait another 30 minutes and make sure the camera is completely cool down before I start the test. All right, now we got all this boring stuff explained. Let's start talk about the results. The Panasonic Lumix S52's total HDMI latency when recording at 4K resolution is between about 120 milliseconds to just over 300 milliseconds. As mentioned before, this is the total latency caused by the camera and the monitor, but I would say the number is still a bit high because when I compared it to the Sony A7 IV, A7 IV's 4K recording HDMI total latency is only between around 55 to 170 milliseconds. We don't know how much of the latency is caused by the monitor, but that would be the same for both runs of the results. The Lumix S52 definitely has quite a bit more HDMI latency than the Sony A7 IV. If I convert these numbers to number of frames, the total latency measure with the S52 is consistently around 7 to 8 frames for all the different recording options between 24 to 60 frames per second. A 7 to 8 frame latency would be less noticeable when recording at 60 frames per second than at 24 frames per second. In comparison, the Sony a 7 IV's latency is only around 2 to 4 frames. I've also done some testing using the original S5, and when I compare the results from the S5 and the S5 II, the HDMI latency seems to be very similar between these two cameras. The numbers I got for the original S5 seems to be slightly lower, but it is within two standard deviations, so it's very possible the difference is just because of the sampling error. When using the two cameras side by side, I feel the S52's latency is pretty much the same as the S5. It's not worse, but also it's not any better. If you just look at S52's results, it seems the HDMI latency is largely affected by the frame rate you are shooting the video at, and not so much by the resolution. For example, look at the 6K30, 4K30, and Full HD30 results. They all have very similar latency. Even though when you shoot at 6K30, the camera has to process more than 10 times the number of pixels compared to Full HD30. Increase the video frame rate would dramatically reduce the HDMI latency. If you shoot at 24 frames per second, the total latency is around 300 milliseconds. Shoot at 30 frames per second, and the latency is now reduced to around 250 milliseconds. And if you shoot at 60 frames per second, the latency is now down to 120 milliseconds. So it's about one third the HDMI latency compared to 24 frames per second. Interestingly, shooting at full HD 120 frames per second, the HDMI latency doesn't seem to go any lower and still pretty much the same as 60 frames per second. The Sony A7 IV also has similar behavior as well. Faster frame rate gives you lower HDMI latency. On the other hand, recording at 422 or 420 doesn't seem to affect the latency much at all. Recording at 10-bit or 8-bit also doesn't seem to affect the HDMI latency. 
Recording the video using the Vlog Picture Profile and enable the Vlog View Assist feature also doesn't seem to affect the HDMI latency. I also repeated some of the tests with an Atomos Ninja 5 recorder and some other small field monitor. The latency number that I got is very similar to what I got with my Dell desktop monitor. One thing I've mentioned at the beginning is if you disable the HDMI audio output, then the HDMI output latency could also decrease. So this is a trick that some of the Lumix users would know for a while, and it can still be used on the S5 too. When recording in 4K resolution, the difference in the HDMI latency is very noticeable once you disable the HDMI audio output. The total latency is reduced by up to 50%, because of that, the latency end up only about 30% or so slower than the Sony. And in practice, you probably can't tell any difference. Even when recording at 6K resolution or Full HD, while the difference in the latency is not as dramatic when you disable the HDMI or the output, it is still reduced by approximately 30% and make the latency a lot closer to the Sony A7 IV. So overall, it seems the Panasonic Lumix S5II's HDMI latency is very similar and probably identical to the original S5. However, at 4K resolution, it is around 100 to 150 milliseconds more laggy than the Sony A7 IV, which is quite noticeable. The HDMI latency appears to be only directly related to the frame rate, but not really affected by the video resolution, the bit depth, or other any camera settings that I have tested. So if you really want to reduce the lag, shoot at a higher frame rate. Another way to reduce the HDMI latency is by turning off the HDMI audio output. This would reduce the latency by between 30 to 50 percent, which makes it quite close to the Sony in most cases. Now, while these are not the ideal solutions and not suitable for everyone, until Panasonic has managed to do something to reduce the HDMI latency significantly, these are two of the biggest tricks that you can use to help you reduce the HDMI output latency.